Morning guys, MC Procrastinate here for another two minute video as part of the two minute series. If you're not familiar with what the two minute video is, check the video link below and you'll find out all about it. KTM RC8. I'm not sure if any of you are aware of what a KTM RC8 is, but it was only one of the most uh, amazing and probably revolutionary slash game changing bike that came out back in 2007, 2008. And when I say revolutionary slash game changing, it was very unique and very different. It was a KTM entering from typically like an early day naked slash off-road capability type of production into the Superbikes League with an exceptionally fantastic motorcycle. If you don't know what a KTM RC8 looks like, just check it out here. So <clears throat> it was very interesting. So I've never owned one of these. I've never ridden one of these. Jumped back into the day when I was looking at the good old MB Augustas and stuff um, back in 2007. I actually heard about this bike through the release of The Long Way Round. So if you're not familiar with The Long Way Round, go and check it out, it's a really great video. It's basically Ewan McGregor, the guy off Star Wars, and Charlie, I can't remember, I think it's Sheen. Basically, he um, they get together and they decide to go around the world, basically, um, right through uh, UK, Europe, right the way through Russia, Mongolia, etc., etc., through America, over to the East Coast, and then that's pretty much the end of the journey. Just wait for that plane to come over. Anyway, so where I'm going with this is um, very early on when they were looking to do the journey and they were planning everything out and they were looking to get sponsorships on board to um, give them bikes basically to do this trip. They, um, there was two bikes that were in question. There was the uh, BMW GS, but there was also the KTM equivalent. Uh, so this isn't a race bike, this is just the KTM equivalent. And Ewan McGregor was a huge advocate and fan of KTM. So he basically said, oh, they're amazing, they're great at this. You know, you could probably have a look at the video actually see what she actually said. But what was really, really cool, he actually mentioned, oh, and they're actually looking to go into race bike. Have you heard the news? Have you heard the stories? Have you looked at the concept art? You know, you look at the concept art, what the RC8 was going to look like, it looked absolutely amazing. It did look completely game-changing. Game actually, when I looked at it initially, I actually thought this is like a Lamborghini on two wheels. So everybody talked about MV Augusta or Ducati, and it was a bit of a sort of um, oh, different agreement, like, you know, depend who you talk to, one would see the uh, Ducati has been a Ferrari or one would see the MV Gus has been a Ferrari, but you, you chuck both of them out there because there's relative history that associates with that as well, but you, ch you chuck that out of the equation, this looked like the Lamborghini of bikes, right? It looked really, really pretty awesome. So anyway, so when they initially brought this bike out, the KTM RC8, it had uh, a 990 engine, which was a V-twin, and it was um, basically borrowed from the KTM Duke that they had at the time, so they had a naked bike that was quite successful. They took the engine out of that, put it in this. And then when they were ready to go into proper production, they uh, redesigned and built an engine, uh, which was a 11098. So was that right, 11098? So it was basically equivalent of almost 1200cc V-twin, okay? And that the release date was around about late 2007, 2008. And the bike was in production for a couple of years and then they revised it and they made an R version. When they made the R version, they dropped the original model and um, you know it had really really good um, components on it, it had Olin suspension, had Marchesini wheels or however you say that and it really really was like an amazing bike. I think probably what was a bit of the downfall of KDM, they never ever quite got there with regards to their race capability, they never really, they, they came like fourth I think in one of the races but they never ever came first, second or third, they never really got that podium position. So whether there was a loss in the interest in the company from that perspective, they didn't think they would quite make it or the competition was just too strong and they, there wasn't a big enough market for this RC8. Because you can imagine, you know, it was quite an expensive motor vehicle at the time, a motorcycle at the time. So there's probably just a unique few who would want to be able to invest the money in this bike, especially when you look at your Japanese bikes. It's really hard to go into the kind of specialist bikes, really hard to go into the specialist bike market I'm sure as a manufacturer because you know these other guys, everybody's kind of got their place and position right, it's probably easier to go into a low end budget bike than it is into these specialist bikes and produce something that really really is fantastic. But you know this, this bike through all its time, it was an amazing looking bike, it's certainly something I would love to own but um, you know there's, uh, uh, back in 2014 the bike was done away with. It's really really interesting because the CEO came out and he made an announcement basically saying this is like power phrase, not got ridiculous amounts of power that are technically unsafe for the road and they want to put their interests into the likes of the RC390 which came out which pretty much fell off the back of the RC and what an amazing looking bike that is and they've done really well into that entry market and the KTM Duke. And then you know you have to think about unsafe for the road because they're too much power. Well you look at the KTM Duke, that's 
And lots of people at the time were like, KTM Duke, you know, I mean, that's like 170 odd brake horsepower and you're, you're, yeah, you're talking about Canon the RCA, how does that work? So, yeah. Um, but guys, yeah, that's another bike that goes into the legacy books of history that was something unique, different, definitely was a bit of a game changer at the time, but didn't turn out to be quite the game changer that people expected, but definitely one to have a look up. So let me know if it's something you've ridden or I know somebody's had one, what were your thoughts? Would you buy one today? For now, MC Procrastinator out.